Hello, everybody, and welcome to a conversation with Sarah Kaiser Amaral. She's exhibiting in the seventh annual Evanston Made Member Group Show. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Lisa. Thank you so much for making sure that we got to go into your studio today because it's such a beautiful backdrop and we get to see what you're working on. But first and foremost, tell us what you have in the group show, what you're exhibiting. Sure, um, I'm exhibiting a painting of a figure. I run the Figurative Art League, so I thought that would be appropriate. And it's um, a reclining nude that is inspired by um, a reclining nude classical piece by Ong. And I changed the background. And of course, it's a different person. But <laughs> the model that we were working with was inspired by that painting. So it's called La Odalisque by Ong. By Ong. And the piece that you have is called Lulu's Dream? Yeah, Lulu's the model. I love that. <laughs> It's very, very beautiful. Um, and tell us what's on your canvas. What are you working on now? Um, so this is a painting of Sojourner. Sojourner is one of my favorite models. I've worked with her for quite some time. And the title of the painting is called The Human Condition. And I'll bring a, a little closer so you can see. How oh, is that Notre Dame? That's the Notre Dame in the background. Oh. And of course it's on fire. Oh. And so that was a moment that coincided with um, forest fires out in California. It happened um, quite some time ago, but it definitely had a, an effect on me. And Sojourner, I painted her praying just because in this day and age, there's a lot to pray about. <laughs> and of course, we have to do more than just pray, but... Uh, <laughs> It's a piece that's meant to have a message that we need to do something. And I, a lot of times I just paint pretty decorative things, but not always when I move to, to change, when I move to address social change or to motivate people to wake up. It's easy to live in a happy little bubble all the time, but um, I think art can play many different roles. Mm -hmm. So my art, um, it doesn't fit into one little category. Nice. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's beautiful. Um, how are you doing during the shelter in? Has there been a lot of changes to your practice or what's going on? It's been hard. Um, hard yet rewarding on some level. Noise was closed for two and a half months. So this is really my sanctuary. And it's also where I teach and it's my livelihood. So it's been really hard to be trapped at home. Um, but I didn't really feel trapped because I was also um, drawing and making smaller things, studies for larger paintings. And I always like to do studies first because there's so much to think about on a larger canvas. So I tried to make the best of it and Ironically, it made me realize that I need to carve out more time for my own work. Mm -hmm. uh, before COVID, I was teaching all the time and I really didn't have much space for me and my own visions. So now I'm taking on um, less students and trying to leave at least two or three whole days for me to do my work. Nice, because in your studio at Noise, you teach the Figurative Art League, but then also it's your own personal studio. Right. My work is in the back corner, and I have group classes of, say, 12 to 15 people. Uh, other times, they might be small, maybe private lessons or two or three people. Mm -hmm. So it's a flexible space, a bit like your gallery where you have a show, but you also have meetings there and things. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm trying to just use it to make my own work, too instead of always um, opening it up for other activities, which I love doing. I just need to strike a balance. Yeah, and make time for you. I mean, I think that's a lot of artists are, a lot of people are re-evaluating what it is they're going forward gonna spend time doing. Um, talk to us a little bit about your journey into becoming an artist when you owned that title. Sure. Talk to us about that. Um, so I lived with a single mom until I was 13. 
and I didn't have siblings. I was an only child and we moved a lot because of her job. And so I spent a lot of time alone and started making art because, one, because I was bored. <laughs> Two, because there was a lot going on inside. And um, so it was almost like art was my imaginary friend who was always there to play with. Mm. And as I got older, thankfully my parents let me study art. Um, I had friends whose parents just flat out said, no, you're not doing that. We don't know how you're going to make a living. And, but my parents, they just said, you do whatever you want to do. And they've always been very hands off of my life. So I'm glad. And um, so I just did what I wanted. And I didn't really own my vocation until about 20 years ago because I was struggling to feed myself. And I was wearing a lot of different hats. So I was um, studying social work and Spanish education and even worked in those fields for quite some time. But around 20 years ago, I finally just committed myself and realized that this was my path. Uh, but ironically, teaching, there is an element of therapy involved. And so in social work, I studied some methods that therapists um, use and ways of communicating. So even though I don't wear the hat of a social worker or a therapist, they do overlap a little bit. Nice. And have you been teaching art for 20 years? Yeah, when I got my MFA, um, I actually got my MFA in 2003. So we'd say 17 years. Okay. But I started my master's program 20 years ago. And that was a big commitment, not just time, but also finances. And I finally just said, okay, I'm on this bus. This is what I need to do. It was scary, but I did it. And yeah, after I got my MFA, I started teaching at city colleges and um, the American Academy of Art and started teaching adults. And I had always taught something, whether it was uh, art or sailing or horseback riding or mm -hmm. English. So it just seemed like a natural progression. Nice. And I love that you made a distinct, you know, choice that that's just, I love that you're on that bus. I'm glad. I'm so glad <laughs> you made that choice. Who, last question, who are your inspirations or, and what um, are your inspirations when it comes to your bodies of work? Lately, I've been looking at painters who do um, double exposures. So they tend to work with photographs where there's a bit of a layering effect. And one is uh, Mia Bergeron. And she's in this book I got called Disrupted Realism, where all the artists um, paint elements of their paintings that are realistic. Let's turn that off. But they also do some layering. Mm -hmm. So I'll just show you a quick example of, if you don't mind. No, not at all. I love it when people... Still here. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. Oh, wow. Um, this is a double exposure, and I, I like the fact that in her painting, this is not her painting, but it's inspired by it. Mm -hmm. um, you can see the figure, but it's also blurry in some areas, and the double exposure makes it more abstract. Nice. So um, she's an influence, as well as just looking at... Uh, photos and film stills that have double exposures. Mm -hmm. and, um, other people locally are influences like um, Jennifer Prezant across the hall. I love her work. I, yeah, her work is just, it, it has so many levels of complexity to it. And she's always willing to talk to me about her technique and teach me things. Mm -hmm. um, and Another, other people are Jules, so Jules Coonhart. Mm -hmm. I like her work because she never really gets stuck in one direction and she's always challenging herself. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my influences are living and <laughs> I can talk to them. <laughs> yeah, and you can learn from them. I love, that's what I love about the Noise Cultural Center is there's, in all of those studios, there's such interesting artists that you can just go and have conversations with and see their work. Yeah, I've learned so much more from them than I ever did in school because nice. learning's more focused and um, it's not just general concepts. Mm -hmm. 
and say, hey, how do I paint this cloud? And they'll say, well, this is how you do it. It's much more specific. Nice. Well, thank you again so much, Sarah, for not only being in the show, but also letting us into your studio today. I'm so glad you're back in your studio. Thanks for coming. It feels great. Yeah, it feels great to see you. Thank you again. Thank you. Keep up the good work. <laughs>